What exactly was the evolutionary purpose of language? Was it to discuss waterholes, weapons, what lay over the hill? Or might it have had another advantage? The answer may be surprising. The kind of situations we're looking for to study language was just the sort of natural places where you would have a conversation in a very informal, relaxed conversation with a friend. So we kind of looked in places like bars, trains, anywhere where you would kind of um, have a sort of a natural everyday conversation. Robin Dunbar is an eavesdropper. He listens in to other people's conversations to determine what we really talk about. I think the conventional view of all those who work on language, linguists and all these kind of people, is that language is about the transmission of technically complex information. This is what I kind of call the, the Einstein and Shakespeare version of language. And the answer is, oh, no, it isn't. If you actually go and listen to what people talk about on a day-to-day -day basis, back there in their homes or on the street or over the garden fence, then it's about social relationships. The most surprising thing was actually how much time people did spend in social gossip, if you like. I mean, we, we really hadn't expected it to be so great. Social exchange of information should be important in people's lives. We really hadn't expected it to be perhaps more than about a third of total conversation time. And here we were at uh, two-thirds. Two-thirds of all conversation, Robin Dunbar believes, is dedicated to gossip. Throughout human evolution, could nature have selected not just for the fittest, but for those with the most acute social skills? What language does, the bottom line, if you like, is it just allows us to hold big groups together. It's like a kind of opening a window of opportunity, suddenly there's all sorts of other things you can do with it. Uh, because you can use it to solicit information about third parties, so you can now see what happened when you weren't actually...